Hi, I'm Tom Zelenka. Now I'm just a beginner in the kitchen. In every episode of Carolina Cooking, I meet a different chef from a famous restaurant in the Carolinas Ooh. who'll teach me to cook their secret recipes mm. in just 30 minutes or less. Really good. Welcome to Carolina Cooking, shot on location at the mansion on Forsyth Park and the 700 Kitchen Cooking School. Now here's your host, Tom Zelenka. Hi there, welcome to Carolina Cooking. I'm your host, Tom Zelenka. This is the show where you and I get to learn to cook together. And we find great chefs from great restaurants all around North and South Carolina, and we bring them here to teach us their incredible recipes. Now, NASCAR fans, Today we are making Elliot Sadler's sesame tuna, and we have invited a chef from Charlotte, North Carolina, from Red Rocks, Chef Dominique Battistella, to join us here today. Dominique, very glad to have you come and join us. Hi, nice to be Thank here. Thank you very much. Oh, you're and welcome. We're making Elliot Sadler's sesame tuna, a little recipe that you whipped up, right? Oh, absolutely. Alrighty. And so, um, well, where do we begin? We have asparagus in here. We have, is that rice? Oh yes, we have a uh, wild rice risotto, we have asparagus, we have sesame crusted tuna, and a ginger teriyaki broth. A ginger teriyaki, teriyaki broth? Oh yes. Okay, well, uh, do we start, where do we begin on this? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to blanch our asparagus. Blanch, blanch. Like yes. Dorothy, like the Golden Girls? Uh, no, not quite. Blanch is actually a term for par-cooking uh, vegetable. And oh, yeah, uh, of course, par-cooking. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. which is cooking it partially so that you can finish it in a saute pan later on. Oh, okay, okay. and what does that do? Uh, well, Just partially cooks it? Or uh, yes. any other reasons why I'd blanch something? Um, well, it brings out the brightness of the uh, asparagus. It makes it a lot more green when you actually go to saute it instead oh. of it just getting browned. Oh, okay. All right. Good to know. And usually, I mean, is this a smaller version of asparagus or are they longer? Uh, yeah, or? Uh, yes, it is actually. That's uh, known as a pencil asparagus. Uh, there are various sizes of asparagus ranging from jumbo, which is the largest, which is about this big, to mm -hmm. the pencil, which is the size that you have right here. Okay. All right. All right, do we have to cut this off or anything? Or uh, no, just... we've already cut it off to the proper length, so uh, what you're going to do is find yourself a pot of boiling water. Well, I think we have one right here. All right, go right Hopefully ahead. it's a pot of boiling water there. And All righty, it's boiling. starting to bubble, and then just throw it in? Oh, yeah. For how long? Uh, until it turns nice and bright green for you. Nice and bright green. Okay. All righty. Cover it back up or just sit here and watch it? Uh, you can sit there and watch it. Oh. And while you're doing that, we can do some other things. Sure. Okay. Uh, we can go ahead and make our ginger teriyaki broth. Alrighty. Well, uh, I imagine we need ginger and we need teriyaki. Uh, well, actually, we need ginger and we need to make the teriyaki. Okay. So what we have right in front of us, we have pineapple juice, All right. a little bit of soy sauce. Soy? Uh, rice wine vinegar. Okay. Sesame oil. Sesame oil. Brown sugar, yep. light brown sugar, chopped chives, chives are sesame seeds, okay, black and white. Yep. And then we have a little bit of uh, powdered ginger. Powdered ginger, right. There. All right. Okay. So what goes in first? Uh, let's start with our pineapple juice. Pineapple juice in okay. the saucepan up in there. In the saucepan right there. All right. And how much? About a cup of pineapple juice. Yes. All right. And we've got about two thirds of a cup of soy sauce. Soy sauce. sauce. All right. So that's how many packets when they uh, deliver your Chinese food. How many packets would that be? Because uh, I have a ton of them in my fridge. Uh, about 12. 12. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Good to know. Because I like to, you know, live on the cheap, and so you use the little packets All instead right. of getting the bottle from the store. Mm -hmm. This is what? That's rice wine vinegar. Does that go in there too? Yes, it does. Okay. Should I put a little heat on the? Uh, Absolutely. Here? All righty. Fire up the. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. High is good, or? High is just fine. Okay. We're just going to bring it to a boil and it'll be done. Uh, go ahead and add your uh, brown sugar. Oh, brown sugar. Yes. This right here, and this is about a cup. Uh, a little, a little bit short, but yes. Do I need to stir it in or? Uh, just yeah, drop we can it in? do that. Okay, fantastic. And um, so put in your ginger. My ginger, my powdered ginger here. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's already starting to dissolve. It smells good. Now these things are they bright green yet or? Uh, yeah, we okay. can take those out. Alrighty. Oh, I'm going to back up here. Get yourself. myself a little tong action. All right. Just go ahead and set those aside on your cutting board. Oh, okay. And they are bright green. Look at yeah. them right there. Okay. All right. We can turn this off. Fantastic. So I have. I just put the ginger in. Chives. Uh, we're going to wait till the end to put the chives okay. in. Sesame, sesame seeds. seeds. We're going to wait till the end on those. Alrighty. Okay. 
So uh, then that can just sit there and, and go for how long? Uh, until it boils. Okay. And we want this to be a nice and high. All right. It gets there quick. And okay. then you can put in your sesame oil right now. Right now? Yes. Okay. I can do that. And then just give it some shakes here. Yes. All right. I can shake. And spatter, too. And spatter. Okay. Oh, of course. Yeah. All right. And what's, what is this? Uh, that's just a little bit of salt and pepper. We'll use that at the end to season it to adjust it to its proper form. Okay. All right. All Very right. good. Uh, next thing we need to do is we need to have our tuna. We have tuna. All right. Look at that. That's yeah. a beautiful, bright red uh, Hilo tuna that's been provided to us by our friends at Poseidon Enterprises in okay. Charlotte. Okay. And then we have white and black sesame seed mix here. All right. And we're just going to dredge the uh, tuna in the sesame seeds, so just drop it right in. Just drop it in? Just drop it in. Okay. Okay. I didn't say throw the sesame seeds on it. You can just lightly turn it over. But if you wanted to throw sesame seeds on it and have more fun, could Sure, you? make a mess. Okay, go. <laughs> go crazy. All right. And just, just get a nice Co round. Cover, cover the whole thing. Make sure it's completely covered in sesame seeds. Alrighty. Is this is this exactly like how you want it, or? Uh, yeah, actually. A little uh, more on the sesame seed action here. Well, you don't want to cake them up. Oh, here, let okay. me let me show you. Sure, go for it. Shake off the excess. Okay. And then you get your awesome. Alrighty. Well, when we come back, we're going to be putting the uh, tuna in the frying pan when Carolina Cooking continues. You can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas, all in one book, the Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find the Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Amazon.com and our website, carolinacooking.tv. Welcome back to Carolina Cooking. I'm here with Chef Dominic Battistella from Red Rocks in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we are making Elliot Sadler's Sesame Tuna. Now, I know Elliot Sadler is the 38 card. Do we know anything else about Elliot Sadler? Well, let's see. Uh, he was in the chase, uh, the next call chase for the championship last year. He drives the M and M's uh, car. Have you now? Have you thought about putting some M and M's in this thing? Uh, it would probably melt somewhere along the line, uh, which is not in your mouth. So I don't want to make their advertising untrue. Oh, so, okay. Uh, we're All gonna right. stick with that on okay. the Elliott Sadler's dessert. Now, have you thought about this? Having somebody separate the white sesame seeds from the black ones, and then you could have it draw a little thirty-eight in here. That's awfully complicated, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just throwing out ideas here. Well, right. we are finishing up our sauce right now. I have a few things that I need to add into the sauce to make it complete. And uh, I believe they're up front. Is that about right? Yeah, we have our chopped chives, ah, and we also chives. have our black and white sesame seeds. Our We're black and that. white ones. Okay. There All the go. chives? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Throw in some chives there. Yes. And the black and white sesame seeds? Absolutely. Really Throw them right in. think about separating them, because I uh, think that'd be kind of neat. Just my idea. Just my thought process. Okay, okay. so we have chives in there. We have uh, the black and white sesame seeds. All right. And, and our sauce is done. We can remove that from the stove right now. Do you want any salt and pepper? Uh, a little bit. Go ahead and throw a little bit in. This is going to be salty already because of the soy sauce okay. in here. So right. we don't need to add a lot of that. And uh, okay. that's done. All righty. Set fantastic. that aside. All right. Woo we completed something. Mm. Now we get to cook ourselves some tuna. Huh? Absolutely. We're going to use this small it. pan right here. Okay. We're turn it on to high heat. Okay. So we're going to sear this tuna on the outside and we're going to leave it nice and rare on the inside. So add about half of that oil. Okay. And what kind of oil is this? Uh, we have a blend of uh, vegetable and olive oil. It's about 80% vegetable oil, 20% olive oil, just to give it that little bit of flavor. Okay. And if so. we were going to use pure extra virgin olive oil, that would really overpower the flavor of the tuna. So okay. we want to use a blend or just a pure vegetable oil okay. instead of olive oil. All right. So we're going to let this get nice and hot. You can tell it's nice and hot when the oil starts to ribbon a little bit and move very fast. When the oil in the starts pan, what? Uh, to ribbon a little bit. Ribbon. You'll, yeah. Which okay. you'll see, you see how it kind of slides like that. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Now you're going to go ahead and add the tuna. Okay. Be careful, it may spatter a little bit on you. There you go. All right. Cool. All right. All right, now while we're doing this, we can go ahead and start cooking our rice. Oh, 
Okay. Right. And we have to do our rice in a kind of a creamy, creamy rice kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, well what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a wild rice risotto. Uh, and I've simplified this a little bit because risotto is quite complicated and most home cooks have a hard time uh, in creating a very nice risotto. So I've created a uh, way to make risotto without actually uh, going through the long complicated steps. You can okay. take a, any kind of uh, cooked rice, like a boxed rice on Uncle Ben's or something like yep. that, a minute rice, yep. and uh, finish it out in such a way that it uh, mimics risotto. So okay. that's what we're gonna do today. Okay. All right. So we've already cooked up our rice here. Right, we this have a- cooked rice. We have a cooked blend of wild and long grain rice. Okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add this to the pan back here. Okay, should we be alarmed that that's smoky? Uh, no, not really. Okay, great. You can You're go ahead and turn it. You can go ahead and turn it over right now. All right. So this is going to cook for a very short amount of time. Look at that nice mm. brown right there. Mm, I did good, huh? Oh, absolutely. All right. All so, right. rice up front. Our faux risotto. Right. Not to be so confused gonna, with faux risotto. Uh, no, no, okay. not not at all. Faux risotto. And what else goes in there? Uh, well, we're going to add a little bit of cream some grated Romano cheese and some butter, but we're gonna let this pan get nice and hot with the rice in it. Go ahead oh. and stir that around for a little bit. Okay. All right. All right. And you can go ahead and remove your tuna now. Really? This is actually done. It takes a very short amount of time to cook this tuna to rare. A couple of minutes. Yeah, there you go. Ooh. We can set that aside. Still sizzling. Yes. All right. All now, right. will this continue to get? Uh, will this continue to cook over there? Is it uh, slightly, okay. slightly continue right. to cook? Okay. Now we've got the rice going over here. Mm -hmm. Stir that. It's you can hear it's starting to sizzle. Yep. So you can go ahead and add Actually. your cream. Yep. Oh, add the cream. There you go. Alrighty. I got cream in there. Perfect. Stir that around a little bit. Is that bit. just a heavy cream, heavy whipping uh, cream? Heavy whipping, whipping cream. cream. It's a okay. forty uh, percent heavy cream. Or if you're going to the grocery store, they'll just have that labeled as a whip, uh, heavy whipping cream. Okay. All right, and we're gonna let that reduce oh, a little bit. No butter? Uh, we're gonna add the butter at the end okay. to finish that. All righty. Okay, so you're gonna let the cream reduce and uh, soak into the rice a little I'll bit. I'll give it a stir, let me give there it a you try. There you go. Let me try the stirring. Sure. All right, and so about to half, get it nice and a little thicker than what it is now. Right. Okay. All right. All right, and do we have any, uh, we have our asparagus here, right? Yes, and we've got our pan back here getting hot for our asparagus. Okay. All right, we're gonna turn that up slight a bit and add the rest of that oil that you have there to the pan. Okay, and now we already blanched these, blanched these. Yes. And uh, now they're nice and green and pretty and Absolutely. par cooked. Par cooked. Par cooked. About halfway cooked. Okay. All right, and we're gonna let this oil get nice and hot. Okay. Now go ahead and add your uh, cheese. My cheese to, to the, the, to the, the front. Yes. Okay. And that's just Parmesan cheese? Uh, actually, that's a grated uh, Romano cheese. Oh. Okay. Well, everybody loves Romano. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it's all nice and thick. Turn that down a little bit. Now go ahead okay. and add your butter and stir it around really, really quickly. Okay. I'm just holding on to my asparagus for no real reason. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Just one or two? Uh, one would be just fine for oh. that. All right. But if you like a lot of butter? Oh, yeah. Go. You can add two. Feel free to uh, give yourself a heart attack. Okay, good. good. Hey, I mean, the great thing about rice is it's so good for you, and then this dish, you add three kinds of fat to it, it's even better. That's true, that yeah. is true. Yeah, no, I can see your point there. Yeah. Okay, is it, and our tuna is healthy, and that's what's important too. Oh, absolutely. Sesame seeds are healthy, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, uh, now we can go ahead and add our asparagus. Adding our asparagus. All right. Okay. Ooh. Let it sizzle up there. Let it sizzle up and add yourself a little bit of that salt and pepper. And you could probably manipulate those with your tongs. All right, and what? You can manipulate those with your tongs, okay. kind of turn them over. Manipulate them. Yes. Manipulation is occurring. Yep, okay. All right. All right. Now, risotto's done in the back. We okay. can go ahead Fantastic. and remove that. Well, when we come back, I'm going to be talking with Eris Ragazayas to find out which wine goes perfectly with our sesame tuna. Carolina Cooking continues.
can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas, all in one book, The Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find The Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Amazon.com and our website, carolinacooking.tv. Hi, welcome back to Carolina Cooking. I'm here with Eris Ragazayas and our wine cellar at the 700 Kitchen Cooking School. And Eris, we're making tuna. So fish, fish means white wine, right? Well, this could go either way. Okay. I mean, look at the color of that uh, tuna. Well, that's, yeah. to me, that's saying red wine. Yeah. Uh, if you put a white wine with this, that would be just fine. Okay. And it would probably be a lot safer because there's probably a lot of white wines that would go. Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with red wine, you gotta be a little more careful. Okay. You, you want a wine that's not gonna have too much tannin in it because that's not gonna do very well with the fish. Okay. And so the wine I chose was from the Merlot grape from right. uh, California. And California Merlot tends to be a very soft wine. Rich in flavor, but soft texture. And okay. that's why I uh, picked it. And the producer that I picked was Robert Mondavi. Okay. And this is their private selection line. Yeah. And Robert Mondavi is very notable for making a huge range of wines. Okay. Uh, all the way from $150 bottles of super premium California Cabernets. Wow. All the way to this, which is, a, which is sort of their everyday drinking wine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, as very, is that very the affordable. same as what the French would call like a table wine? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. But don't... Don't let that make you think it's going to be of a, you know, mediocre quality. Really? The, the mark of a great winery like Robert Mondavi is that they can maintain a high quality level going from the $150 wine right down to the $10 wine. Okay, well, is it, is it easier to make a, you know, a lesser? Is that why it's a little cheaper? It's easier to make? No, as a matter of fact, it's harder to make a good cheap wine than it is to make a good expensive wine. Well, why is that? Well, you talk to the winemakers, and what they'll tell you is that with the $150 wine, Nature is basically making the wine, mm -hmm. and the winemaker's job is to be a steward, to sort of bring the wine up to its fullest potential. But when they're taking grapes from all over the, the uh, central coast and making huge quantities of a wine, mm -hmm. uh, nice ripe berry fruit mm -hmm. flavors yeah, in there, just a, little, yeah. just a little yeah. hint of oak, soft texture. They're taking grapes from all over the central coast, yeah. making a lot of wine, trying to make it consistent from batch to batch and from year to year. That takes winemaking skill. Okay. It's not just uh, nature. The winemaker's got to get in there mm -hmm. and uh, do his job. With the expensive wines, great uh, grapes come in. The winemaker's job is not to screw it up. Okay. All right. So basically, Robert Mondave, when I see that, I don't have to initially think, oh, that's just too rich for my blood. They make a full line. Full range uh, okay. for, for every palate and for every wallet. And so, and a red wine can go with tuna because Absolutely. it's got red, it's kind of a it's, reddish meat. It's a very rich uh, okay. and very meaty dish. I mean, even texturally, you know, it's it's chewy and you almost need a chewy Speaking red Speaking of wine. which, we finish this up, I gotta get back there and taste it to see how well I did when Carolina Cooking continues. You can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas, all in one book, The Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find The Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Amazon.com and our website, carolinacooking.tv. Welcome back to Carolina Cooking. Well, the white flag is out, and we are racing towards the finish line. We have our tuna finished. We have our risotto finished. By the way, I'm here with Chef Dominic Battistella from Red Rock in Charlotte, North Carolina, and this looks incredible. It smells good, too. So. What do I need to do next? Okay, the first thing you need to do is you need to take your risotto. Okay. There you go. All right, I'm gonna just set my tune over here. Take my risotto. Just give a good scoop right in the middle of the plate. Okie dokie, I can do that. All right. Uh, one more would be one great. One more scoop, okay. All right. Fantastic. All right, then we're gonna take our ginger teriyaki broth. All righty. And you're gonna ladle that around the risotto. Ladle it around the risotto. Around and what, the uh, this is a ginger teriyaki. We had to make the teriyaki ourselves. Absolutely. Ginger teriyaki what sauce? Uh, uh, broth. Broth. It's a broth. It's okay. uh, no, not a butter or not a cream. It's just, just a broth. Just a broth. All righty. It is delicious. Very nice. I, uh, I see all the stuff separating in there. That's good. And, uh, we have the sesame seeds already in here. Is that uh, good? Oh, yeah. Okay. All righty. Fantastic. And a little, uh, little, little asparagus, asparagus right? right here. Okay. All three right. pieces. Oh, three pieces. Three pieces, and then do another three pieces crossed. Oh, crossed, okay. And Make a three. little X. Little X marks the spot of where our tuna goes, right? Okay, now take your tuna, put it on the cutting board. Okay. And we're going to slice that on a bias. To do that, you just take your knife, 
hold it at an angle against the tuna and you're gonna take a slice through, exposing a lot of that nice red flesh. Okie dokie. Look, look at, at that. that. That is pink and nice, look at that. And then just kinda set it on top in a crisscrossy pretty fashion. Yeah, just so that you can expose the uh, red flesh to uh, okay. yourself, your date, or your customer, All as right. I do. And uh, last but not least, we're gonna take a little bit of sea salt sea here salt. and sprinkle it over the red flesh of the tuna. Red flesh, alrighty. And let me get you a glass of this Robert Mondave Merlot here, which you can find on the wine list at Red Rocks. And uh, Eris suggested that this, this would be perfect with the tuna. And we'll go ahead and give it a taste as well to see how delicious it is, because it smells great right now. And just taking a little bite here. Excellent wine. Go ahead and get your fork. All right. Mmm. See what a good job oh, you did. Oh, that is very good right there. And the wine. Oh, that's very, yeah, very excellent job. Thank friend. you very much. Well, if you want to find out more about our recipe here, our wine, if you want to find out about Chef Dominique or Red Rocks in Charlotte, North Carolina, visit the website at www.carolinacooking.tv. That's www.carolinacookingtv. I'm Tom Zelenka. That's Carolina Cooking. Go to carolinacooking.tv for the recipes featured on this show. Plus, on carolinacooking.tv, you'll find more information on the wine, chefs, and foods of Carolina Cooking. That's carolinacooking.tv. Carolina Cooking is filmed on location in 700 Kitchen Cooking School at the Mansion on Forsyth Park Hotel in Savannah, Georgia. For details on their hands-on cooking classes, call 888-711-5114 to book a class.